Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Recently I had Next Level Racing reach out to me and ask me if I wanted to do a first look review at their new upcoming flight simulator product. Of course I accepted and a few weeks later had a big box show up on my door with the flight simulator light inside of it. Having never had a cockpit home cockpit setup like this before, eagerly got it out of the box and all set up. So let's go ahead, jump right in and look at the flight simulator light. Starting out with unboxing and building the chair, everything was packaged neatly in a box and also had a lot of protective material around the parts. Unfortunately, putting the parts together is where I had some trouble. The instructions were not the best and easy to understand. Step one of the instructions just reads, install nut, bolt, and washer into the headrest. Uh, unfortunately, there is no indication of what bolt nut or washer you're supposed to use or how many so it was very difficult to figure out what parts you actually needed to put the chair together the image provided was small for showing what parts you needed and if you were able to read the image it showed you using more washers than you had included in the kit to be able to finish the rest of the steps that are listed in the instructions a couple of parts also had trouble fitting into place I eventually had to get a rubber mallet even to get the two shifter plates into position. Now this could have all been because my unit that I got was a pre-production engineering unit and it did look like it had been to put together before. So the, your mileage might vary when setting it up. The included tools can definitely get the job done, but if you have your own tools like screwdriver and a wrench, it'll definitely make tightening things down a lot better. First impressions all put together were generally positive. It does look a bit like a glorified lawn chair like I have seen some others say, but it is very sturdy with the when the adjustment hubs are nice and tight, and the materials are all very high quality. It is a bit shorter than I would like when it's positioned at my desk, and also keeps me further away from the desk than with my normal chair position, but bringing the monitors closer to the edge of the desk definitely helped with this. Sitting in the chair, one thing I immediately noticed was there was a constant feeling that I was going to slide under the chair. Basically, whenever I was fully sat back in the chair and then went to lean back, I felt like my bottom half was being pushed forward by when the material was stretching out from me leaning back. And over time, you can, you can feel yourself slowly kind of submarining into the chair a little bit. Also over time it can get a bit uncomfortable sitting in the chair basically just because it is a single layer of fabric for the chair. There is foam support on each side of the backrest but for me being so small and skinny as I am they didn't really do much for me unfortunately. Getting in and out the yoke arm can be folded out of the way for easy ingress and egress with the quick release clamp. It's quite intimidating to move the yoke arm when the yoke, yoke is attached to it, but it can definitely support all the weight that is on it. I did find myself climbing in and out of the side of the chair when it's positioned at my desk as all the wires leading from my peripherals to the computer kind of made it hard to get in the intended way. Next Level Racing advertises being compatible with most flight sim hardware on the market today. Installing my X56 was no problem, as all four mounting points on the stick and throttle lined up perfectly with mounting with the mounting plate, and there were included bolts that fit perfectly. My SciTech ProFlight rudder pedals were mostly compatible, but I did have to get a little creative with using bolts and spacers and only some of the mounting holes on the rudder pedals to get it attached. Also borrowing a honeycomb yoke from a friend to test out with this cockpit setup, the only way I found to be able to attach it was through the sticky plate that comes on the base plate for the yoke. No way to screw it in unfortunately, and nor was there a, w a place that was thick enough for me to use the clamps to clamp it down. This, sort of, this kind of problem I could see happening with other yokes like the SciTech ProFlight yoke. The yoke bar is also advertised to be used as a keyboard holder. Unfortunately, my kit was missing a screw for one of the brackets, so it was difficult to test this. The keyboard holder also appears to really only be designed for wireless keyboards. 
The wire coming out of the top of my keyboard was getting in the way of one of the brackets, not a fully allowing the keyboard to rest in between the two brackets, which would allow it to be held in place when you open up the yoke bar. There are adjustments at multiple places on the Flight Simulator Lite. You can adjust the height of the front and back legs, although the back legs have screws to lock it into place and not quick releases like the front legs do. The rudder pedal mount can also have its front flipped to keep the pedals flat or in a raised position. I preferred using it in the raised position. The mounting plates on each side can be moved forward or backwards depending on the hardware you're using and your personal size. I just wish it was easier to adjust these without having to loosen four nuts on the bottom of the mounting plates. The throttle plate also has a place for your mouse. An additional support arm can be installed for extra support for this plate, which I do recommend installing if you intend to use your mouse on there, as it makes the mouse pad much sturdier. The yoke arm can be adjusted, but the notches where it locks into place are so far spread apart that basically there's only one place that I would consider using it. Flying in the sim with equipment attached is just as easy as any other setup. It's nice to not have to worry about your controls moving or sliding while you're flying. The stick and throttle setup would be my go-to for this product, as the yoke position did feel a bit high for my liking. And with the yoke bar adjustment basically being locked into one place, there isn't much to fix this. One of the main selling points for the Flight Simulator Lite is that it can be folded up for easy storage and advertise you being able to keep your hardware installed. While anything attached to the two side plates is out of the way from anything folding, you likely will have to remove your yoke and rudder pedals to get everything folded up together nicely. Some smaller pedals maybe can still be attached though. It takes practice to gracefully fold up the chair. I didn't do it as gracefully on my first try here as you can see, but it can be done within a few minutes. Just be ready for the side plates to swivel down when you release the adjustment hubs. It is fairly easy to move around if you aren't in a tight space as it and can be folded up pretty well. Overall, the Flight Simulator Lite is a solid product. Once you get past the poor building instructions, it offers a way to attach your flight sim equipment so you don't have to worry about stuff moving, which is a great definite plus for sims like DCS. I wish there would be some other additions included like zip tie cables for cable management as some wires can be just left hanging everywhere. Being sold at $299 US, the Flight Simulator Lite is a fairly solid option for any entry or mid-level simmer who wants to get into the home cockpit setups. While it still takes a decent amount of space when fully set up, it's nice to be able to fold up for storage and the build quality of it makes it a great option. Hope everyone has enjoyed my first hardware review Hopefully I'll be able to do more of these in the future. Let me down down below if there's ways I can improve on my hardware reviews, and we'll see everyone in the next video.